What is happening everybody? Josh here from Spawn Fly Fish and today we are tackling tuna. So in the vise we have our Gorilla Live Bait Hook from Owner. Really awesome hook especially if you're fishing live bait for tuna but we are going to fish a fly and we're going to tie a fly off of this hook really really strong so no need to worry about a bent out. This is a great hook for these types of species. But before we get started, do us a huge favor, hit like, hit subscribe, and we will get into this. So we got that gorilla hook in the vise and we are gonna start working our thread back. This is a nice little fly, nothing crazy, really fast, really simple, but it has some really, uh, really cool elements. All right, so those bling tail connector kits from Hairline to use people use them for Pacarini tails, for other things here. We are going to lay a thread base and then we are going to attach one here. I'm going off camera, I'm just getting it set up a little bit. We are gonna attach one off the back of this hook. But one thing, so we cut this really short. So these, these uh, <laughs> bling tail connector kits, they have a really long, uh, wire here and we cut it when you're cutting this be mindful that your finger like don't hold it like this and then trim it I've done that and when you cut it it shoots that wire straight into your finger so be mindful of that so we just need to tie this in like so and this isn't gonna have a hook on it so you don't need to worry too much about this but we are gonna secure it really nicely with a ton of thread wraps and get that into position Looking good. Alrighty, so as you've seen Pete's trick here with a little bit of super glue for our next element, but this is also, we're gonna use a little bit of super glue in this fly, so we're just gonna strengthen this a little bit. So we're just gonna get a little, some little dollop of that on top and then add our next element here. So work our thread back. And we are gonna go with some flat diamond braid. We used that in a previous fly, so we wanna keep you using some of these materials. We don't want you to just use the material for one fly and then say, what do I do with this next? There's tons of uses for all the materials that we feature in all of our videos. So we're gonna tackle this right now. So this is gonna be an underbody. It's gonna shine through a little bit, uh, depending on how these fibers wisp in the water when you're uh, stripping in the fly. So we're going to wrap this as tight as possible one overlapping the other just a tad to push that super glue forward and really solidify that tail connector kit. So we're gonna go about two thirds of the way up. This is a really simple fly. So some of my buddies that I talked to down in San Diego are catching bluefin tuna on pretty sparse flies. So that's our objective this week. Might not happen. Last year when we tried to do this, we caught a bunch of yellowtail and, and yellowfin, which is not problematic in my opinion, but it would be cool to catch a 100 pound fish on a fly rod and this will do it. Alrighty, so we got that in there. Now there's just a few more elements to this fly. So like I said, we're keeping it sparse. We got ourselves an EP brush here. This is the Senyos Chromatic EP brush. And this is a light olive, so that's what we're gonna go for here. Uh, the craft fur brush also works really well for this. Um, we want it to be a little bit longer, so this is a, a three inch brush. Because as you can see, we're just tying this in at the front of the fly here. So it needs some room to move. Alrighty, so let's wisp that out here. Just kind of guide these fibers. We're gonna pick them out afterwards, but nothing crazy here. We're gonna get some wraps in here. So start wrapping. Keep your keep your uh, thread here at the front of the hook eye as we continue. Just pretty tight wraps here. We'll see if we can get 
four or five wraps in. This would be four. Then we'll get one more in there. Nice. Finish right on top there. Get some separation in that brush. Over. Get a little squeak in our vise, but that's okay. And then we can trim that out. Alrighty, so we're here. We're just gonna brush these fibers out a little bit here to get this fishy profile that we're looking for. Again, really, really simple here. Not a lot going on, but when this thing's wet, it looks great. It moves fantastic. So we haven't forgot about that bling tail connector kit, and we are about to get to that. So what we're gonna do here, we're done with this front part of the fly. We're gonna throw in a couple whip finishes here, and then we're gonna move on. Nice and strong, not going anywhere. All right, we can pop that out of the vise, and we will have to ad adjust this a bit as we add one of our little swivels here in preparation for adding our tail element to this fly. So we've adjusted the vise, hopefully you can see that, and we're going to take a spawn polywog tail. These things have been lights out, so we are implementing them in as much thing, as many flies as possible, and tackling tunas next. So. Trim that in there. We got a little bit of a thread started here. We want a we want a pretty good length of this, so it has two tapers to it. So we got the front taper and back taper, pretty uniform. And we are going to tie about midway through that or one of those tapers. So we got a long tail here. We really want that to protrude over. Trim off a little excess, and then you can just really just bury this down onto it. Not too worried about the swivel functionality, more just worried about this uh, connector. And Pacarini, for a long time, I mean, there's some new products on the market now where it's like a, you can switch tails on a fly. That's not something that's new. We have those. They're from Pacarini. Um, it's built. It's a bit of a little loop here. This works just as well. But those are on the on the market. If it's something you'd like, you could tie like a 35 millimeter shank straight off of this and then leave that loop so you can loop it in and loop it off. Um, but that is also available. So there's now, there's now more and more uh, options for this style fly, um, and maybe a little more readily available. Maybe sometime we'll also release something that's similar. Alrighty, we'll see if we can get this resin to work. Got a bit of a resin jam here off camera see if we can't fix it here sorry for this and appreciate your patience all right we should be good to go screw that back on here it comes I'm just adding a little bit of resin. Uh, you can use hardhead there too. Um, and we're just securing that. It's not going to go anywhere again. It doesn't have a hook on it. It'll slip out of that fish's mouth. But we want to stay, we want that tail to stay on there. And these tails are very, very durable. So you don't have to worry about that. So just make sure that it's securely fastened to the swivel.
Might not look that pretty right now, but here in two seconds, it's gonna look really, really good. All right, secure our vise. Pop that out. Hold these fibers back here. I'll try to do this on camera so you can see. Slip it in. Push that down. Yahtzee. Alrighty. So now we're going to have to readjust our vise to get that big gorilla hook back in there. No problem. Takes a half second. And there we go. So now you can see that profile, how it's going to look here. And that tail in the back is just going to kick like crazy freely. Um, and it's going to be really, really, really nice. So we're almost done with this fly. There's just a few more elements we need to add, and those are eyeballs. So when I'm using eyes, I like to turn the vise on its side so I get a good point to pr uh, press into. So we're going to first add a little bit of super glue here. You don't need a lot. Just a little bit here. We're going to throw a eye on the side. Like so. So you can see that. Other side. Yahtzee. So we have a good foundation laid for these eyes. Just going to give it a second, press in there a little bit more, make sure it feels pretty secure. And then we're just going to come in here with our resin, just kind of fill in the gaps. We don't want a huge resin head, but we do want to just fill in these gaps here. So we got there, and then we're going to hit it with the UV light. You'll be able to see if you missed any spots. This didn't get quite in the cracks there. So we'll hit that again. And this part you can take your time with. As you can see, I'm not going lightning fast. The fly itself, you can tie really, really quickly. Um, but this part I'd recommend just taking your time on it. Um, and making sure you get a nice little resin head to it. Um, would love to use a spawn head for this one, but the gorilla hook's just a little bit too big. It's too beefy, but we're working to solve that. And I'm not going completely over the eye. As you can see, I'm just doing kind of the front half of the eye, so I won't resin the entire thing. Um, I don't really like that look, but I do I do see some people that do that and their flies look amazing. I'm just not quite there on my resin abilities. So we hit it with the UV light and we are good to go. That is it everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. Really great little fly. We are going to be tackling tuna with this. We hope you enjoy it. We hope you get some of these materials from us here at Spawn Flyfish. And if you haven't utilized these spawn polywog tails, do so, you're not going to be disappointed. Thank you all very much for tuning in and have a great day.